astronaut would do, though. <laughs> no, usually he's pretty straight up. Oh, well, I mean, everyone has their prize, Wolf, and uh, chicken was his. It does smell really good, not going to lie. All right, Heroes 4 and 3. A lot of hype behind this guy right now in the foreign scene. He's obviously representing Team Liquid as a mercenary player here in Pro League, has partnered with MVP. And Team Liquid is a foreign team, so got a ton of fans in the foreign scene that are rooting him on here. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And recent times, he hasn't had too much success. We haven't seen here really perform outside of Pro League in individual leagues really this season. This guy, on the other hand, live, he's been uh, he's been doing it all, man. He's still one of the top Zerg players, though. I think he's kind of given up his crown to Biol in recent times. He's had him finding the same amount of success. Yeah. Daily MVP five times, by the way. That's wow. It's actually pretty incredible. People take that pretty seriously. The uh, MVP award. We don't talk about it too much because it doesn't mean anything like stats-wise. It's just kind of what the fans on the press it's decide the MVP who, is. It's kind of just who Kanata wants to talk to, you know, <laughs> in the interview. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. Echo is the map. MVP riding the momentum now, but this is their hardest matchup by far today. Hero versus Life. Can they keep it going, or is Life going to tie it up 1-1? Let's find out right now. Bottom right in teal, representing MVP. It's Liquid Hero. And up here in the top left for KT, there's Zerg player Life. Life, one of the most famous players of all time. One of the most successful, absolutely for sure. Yeah. One of the youngest players to have success uh, as a Zerg. One of the most handsome players, in my opinion. Yeah. Although Hero is uh, considered by many fans to be the most handsome. I think Zeth would have to be the most handsome. I player. think so, personally. Yeah. Like that he, sign's upside down. Uh, oh, oops. Uh -huh. he's, oh, he's got predictions. Nice. Um, so those far, are, so good. Those are like my predictions. I, I, I can't remember the, uh, what the fourth player that he had listed there. So I wish but. I just followed my Zerg pride and chose this here. <laughs> it give me a little bit of a step up. Yeah, I actually wish we could see more fan predictions like that. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Well, we are going to see a Forge-oriented opening here from Hero, but he doesn't send a probe, so he's not going to be going Forge first. Like. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll eventually be a Forge, but it's going to be that Nexus down yep. before anything else. So yep. You're playing it greedy. Safe, safe greed. I like it. Not as safe as it could be there. You know, could be a Forge first to avoid any sort of early pulls, but I think life's had kind of passed that point in his life where he was going really early tools all the time against Protoss. Yeah. He slowed it down a lot. He was uh, he was being a bit of a sulky there for a little while. I think ever since he joined KT, he's really like put the brakes on a lot of his shenanigans and cheese. Well, I mean, definitely, right? I mean, he's, he's working with uh, one of the, the two most prestigious teams in Pro League ever, and uh, I'm sure they're telling him, you know, they've, they've got this great coaching staff saying like, just I know on Star Tail, like the coach was like, "All right, I love your style. You can do this, but we we don't tolerate that. No. You have to listen." You to need what we to say. be a macro zerg now. Yeah, you have the talent. You have the skill for it. Own that. And I, I personally feel that ever since he's joined KT, he definitely has gotten even better than mm -hmm. he was before. He's certainly better, and he's certainly more route rounded at this point. And uh, yeah, he he is becoming that macro zerg, but he's still got you know the lifestyle of a, a lot of aggression as well. Now, look at this. Hero decides to go blind, mind you, into a gate after the Nexus. And he's going to go over here and scout, and he will see that it is actually a double hatch for a pool. So he's going to feel very good about his choice. It's basically the best choice he could have made versus this. Yeah, it really is a great choice. Uh, Life also made the correct choice there. Like, uh, both of them just playing very greedy. Both of them, Life is a lot more reckless. Really depends on the build order from the Protoss, but he did make the right choice because obviously no forge on the map. Yeah. So it's the greediest possible builds for these two. And there's no doubt Hero's got something planned here. Now that he's seen this, 
who wants to be aggressive to follow this up as fast as possible. Yeah. What's interesting about the Protoss greed here that we talk about, it's not the same type of greed because it, it, it's a greed to get tech and your expansion, whereas in life's case, it's to get just two expansions. Just get, yeah, as much of an economy lead as you can before Protoss can really do anything about it. And uh, it, it definitely suits what life does these days. And I, I do think that Hero has something planned for this, but he, he must have known for sure that life was going to start it off nice and greedy. Yeah, it seems that way. It looks like both Lucira and Hero have read their opponent's openings insanely well based on how they're starting to play today. Yeah, a lot of research has been done for this match. So uh, far, exactly what we expected, right? Yeah, and, and so far it's paid off. But we don't see tech yet. All we see is a Stalker and Warp Gate research coming out here. Not even a Mothership Core mm. or Hero. So he's, he's waiting, perhaps just to get that Stalker out and make sure he can deny scouts before he actually puts that up. Yeah, it's interesting. He, he could afford something right now, whether it be a Stargate or anything, really. Or a Mothership Core, you know, like, he's at least, At right? least a Mothership Core. Because he, he, I feel like he should have gotten that by now if he was going to go for a later, uh, you know, safer sort of tech so that he's not scouted because he still has over 150 gas right now. It's Lynch. a robotics though. Hmm. Yeah. I definitely don't think it's going to be any sort of aggression in terms of a mortal because that is a late robo for what it should be. By now he should be actually like making immortals because it was such a delayed tech. Yeah, and that's part of the reason why I'm surprised he didn't get a mothership core because the only thing he would have lost by making the Mothership Core is a little bit of pro building time. <laughs> yeah, he can like still make it small. too. Like, there's, uh, there's really no excuse to not have it. But yeah. I mean, he's got something planned, so let's wait and see. Yeah, let's wait and see. He might really just be banking on a massive sentry count or something, and he needs every little piece of gas that he can hold. He's making three, four more gateways. Okay, so he's made sure the overall cannot see it. All right, it looks like it will be that War Prism gateway. It's going to be a sentry drop, perhaps. I think that's what we're going to see here. Yeah, very possibly. He's got a third one lined up. It's oh. so hard in these positions to actually... Look at this. Lings have scattered it there. Yeah. He's like, oh, a robotics facility. This is pretty. This is actually going to be pretty tough to make work. Mm. So we didn't talk about this, but Life did actually add support cores to each of his bases, which will make Warp Prism maneuverability tougher, but he was expecting possibly Proxy Oracle, so he had to catch all safety build here since the overlord was denied. Yeah, safety first. Okay. It's still have an effect, as you said. It looks, look at that, it's going to be a probe as well, so... This is similar to what we saw SOS do yesterday, actually, against the Terran player, Journey, where uh, he kind of dropped uh, dropped some units in the base, but also a probe to put down a pylon. And just went for a massive gateway all in. Yeah, it's cool because if you... You know, if you just use the Warp Prism alone, part of the problem is that while you're attacking, the Queen can just target that down and stop reinforcing. So the Queen can't kill a pylon that goes, the pylon's one of the fastest building portal structures in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is interesting. This is very so that's what he was using it for. <laughs> just gonna hide a dark shrine. This is very hero-esque. I mean, this is exactly <laughs> what the guy loves to do in this matchup. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Look at this. Five Zealots going to an unguarded third base. And he's gonna warp in a bunch more. The warp Spin on the wrong side to protect against these links, but you still will be able to micro them away. It's a lot of zealots. Needs more links to come here. Yeah, 24 links are on the map, and here they come back. Good force here to trap and kill that queen. Protects the sentries again. He can continue to drop them in a safe location. This is actually already doing way too much damage. He's doing sick damage, and it's just going to get worse from here. More warping coming in. Still enough uh, energy in these sentries for a couple more force fields. And don't forget, very soon Dark Templar are going to be on the menu. Here come some Hydras. They do get trapped here. Oh, he actually mm. escapes with them. Oh, except one. <laughs> yeah, he's going to need a few more hydrants if he wants to try and beat this back there. And there we go. A lot more coming from the natural. Should be enough to kind of stop it in its tracks. Yeah, this should shut this down. He does have Overseers on the map as well, so the Dark Templar will not expect to do too much damage. Let's see how quickly he can react, though, because I think that's part of what's going to determine how much damage these get done. Yeah. Well, the Overseer is near the third base still. It's like it's... Uh, it was hockeyed with the army. It remains safe. So I don't think it's actually going to get anything done. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing against Liquid Hero, you're probably going to have an Overseer ready. <laughs> right. It's going to be a, a quad DT drop into the main base there. So this could do something. Yeah. In fact, if he shows his DT first... Oh, God. Oh, oh God. This could be a tragically bad. Oh. oh. Okay, he gets it in. All right. Okay, this DT over here, undetected so far. Oh, the DTs in the main are going to be dealt with very quickly. You should lose them. 
Goodbye, DTs. Oh, five points left in escape. Oh, wow. Well, I don't what? think it's going anywhere now. That, Surrounded. That DT at the natural, though, gets seven kills. <laughs> Somehow, some way, next to a spore, that happens. Here is running him around. While it's still happening as well, he's getting that third base up. Yeah. I feel like life needs to start reacting to this a little bit because if he's just got his whole mind focused on this one warp prism with two DTs, all these hydras, all these links he's committed to are basically just waiting to kill something where they could be actually doing real damage right now. They could third. be doing a huge counter attack, yeah. Uh, all this warp prism just bought him so much space. And life is still kind of trying to drain up his natural and third base again. Trying to recover from the economic damage. Spire is done here. A life doesn't have to make a large mutalist count just yet, if that's what he's in fact got planned here. Maybe just a couple of mutas. Two on the, the cards right now, but he is supply blocked. But if he stayed at two, that'd be fine, because it helps him get rid of this warp prism and any future warp prisms as well. That's true. Uh, then obviously, if he shows a small count of mutalist, it might cause here to overreact to making cannons. He can spend his gas on something else after that. Yeah. Okay, seven more on the way, so. He's committing. He's committing to it. It's going to have a nice muta switch. going to do you know, a lot of damage. Actually, not killing that warp prism. Okay. Yeah, that's oh. a little bit of a mistake. Maybe he could, it, it could leave it for a surprise as well. You yeah, know. it looks like he was considering just keeping them totally hidden. Right. And then they're going to get. Well, this is a big attack here, actually. And life's mutalist count is not big enough yet to hold this. 16 hydras, but with two colossi on the map with all of these sentries at nearly full energy. This is going to be a very difficult attack to hold. Yeah, this is actually looking fantastic for Hiri, but. With no pylon nearby, I wonder how much he's actually going to commit to this fight. So he's going to commit a lot. There are a lot of stalkers being whooped in from that far pylon. And he's just going to go for the kill. Yeah, and there's another pylon right there being added. It's not ready yet, but it will be in just a moment. It looks like Life is going to try to go for a counterattack. There are several cannons here, but the Mutalists are going to do some serious damage. There's nothing to stop them. He might just recall here. All right, I think he could take a base out and recall, and he'd still be absolutely fine. We might just see that. Yeah, I think he's looking at this and saying, okay, this is not a mass amount of units yet. Let's see how much damage I can get done first before I recall. Every single drain is a good start. I'm focusing down the hatchery just yet. He's just, and taking a lot of damage at his natural. Yeah. Five uh, cannons going up at the third base. I don't think they're going to finish, though, because it looks like life is heading in before they're ready. Here they come. Hydra's just a few of them. Splitting the Mulus off into the main base as well. Hero is taking a lot of damage here. And it looks like he has no intention of returning home anytime soon. It's kind of weird. It looks like he's going to take out the natural as well as the third. Maybe then he'll choose to recall. Yeah. He could really do it at any time he wants to. He needs to make sure to. he doesn't lose all his probes, right? That's the, basically the yeah, only thing he has to do. Yeah, don't lose all your probes uh, and make a pretty decent anti air on you, and you're, you're essentially going to win this game no matter what. The uh, probes trying to run away now. He's got 11 of them left. Eulis are on the chase. He's, it looks like he just really is very against the idea of recalling until the last second. Maybe he forgot the mothership's can. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just a bit surprised, you know what I mean? It's like really the only other thing I could... I was like, well, you could just win this game by recalling, but I guess you could delay it by going for a base trade, which I, is never a good thing. Yeah, versus Mulus, I feel like it's the only way he could lose the game is losing all of his probes. Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe well, now, maybe now. He has DTs. Ooh, yeah, definitely now. There we go. Oh, poor Zealot. <laughs> He has DTs and there's no lair, so every Overseer is important, and that was the last uh, one. That literally was. So now, as long as he defends, the DTs cannot be killed until a lair is ready. It's actually a decent amount of mutas. 17 mutas on the map, mind you. Uh, it's never going to be enough to fight this army head on, but it can kill buildings pretty quick. Yeah, there's just still so many Protoss buildings left. Oh, and he finds the hatchery. Oh. This might be checkmate. I think it is. I think there's no way from here. He can't kill the DT. He has to cancel the hatch, but if he does that, he's going to lose the drone. He's got three drones left. That's one right there. Two right there. Where's the third one? Uh, it's somewhere else on the map. There's uh, one in the main, one in the natural. All right. Okay, he made it into a hatch in the main. That's why it wasn't revealed yet. One drone left on the map. He needs to, like, make a... Sp Make a spore crawler. <laughs> that's his, That's pretty much what he has to do. He has to make yeah. a spawning pool, make a spore crawler. Then he can deal with the DT. Then he can try and harass, though he's never going to do much because that third base is completely defended now. And he's actually got a decent amount of probes. I mean, six probes is not decent, but it's not like he's going from one. He's going from, you know, a, ooh, the same starting probes you get when you, you spawn in the game. <laughs> and... Uh, 
Mike's going to work on some of these pylons at least. Maybe he can pick up one Stalker if the Stalkers get caught. They come at a weird angle, but it's going to be so difficult. Yeah. It's, it's really uh, almost a hopeless situation from here. Sure. I mean, he's Ooh. got a Nexus Cannon active to defend this. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's realized that there's no observers, uh, sorry, no overseers on the map. Otherwise, the QTs would be much more active. You see one moving towards the main base now. And life is just trying to find the damage. Kill the Stalker with uh, no mutilus losses, so one tiny victory. I'm going to scout this hatch. Yeah, he sees all the remaining buildings left over. And now it looks like life's going to just move across the map and try one last attack. DT is just make this virtually impossible, right? Yeah. Trying to pick up another Stalker. Good blink micro. GG gives up. And MVP. Two wins in a row. The momentum could not be higher now. I feel like now their biggest worry is what if Benu beats SKT? Right? That's the <laughs> other scary thing here tonight. Jimmy up against Zest is going to be the third match. It's going to be on Vani. Another good shot for MVP to take a win, but. Uh, yeah, pretty surprising so far. MVP really uh, pulling it out. That was that was a pretty pretty fun game. I mean, Light he knew what he was up against, but uh, he just did not he did not uh, defend as well as he I guess he could have, and he didn't have a he didn't have a mutilus count that was big enough. And I think that might have been part of the reason why Hero decided not to recall. He knew that he capped the building so that he couldn't keep making mutilus. And uh, if he keeps the Mulo's count small enough, then he doesn't have to worry about that situation where he just doesn't have his anti air. Because we've seen a yeah. lot of cross players lose where they're like way up in supply, but they can't deal with the Mutalist. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, I do appreciate getting rid of every hatchery before recalling back like that. Uh, but it also made it a bit harder considering he lost every single probe. Long time ago, oh, that was that was awkward, man. That was uh, something that should never have happened. Looks like it really hurt too. That was like a chunk of wood landing on your head. Yeah. Before I a mean, very hot match like that, a very scary match. While he's meanwhile trying to micro his units against, I believe, like uh, Oracle Harass, yeah. and the booth just falls on his head. Oh man. So we're gonna take a very short break, guys, before we go into this third matchup. We'll be right back.